This lesson is on completing the square. In the lesson on factoring, we learned this equation. But consider the case where a and b are equal. This is called a square quadratic. It's called that because this is really just that difference, x minus a, squared. What's really special about this is we can take this number in the middle, the one being multiplied by x, take half of it, and then actually it'd be negative a, and then you could square it, and you'll get a squared. So it's really easy to recognize a square quadratic. You just take the number being multiplied by x, divide it by 2, and square it. If that's not your constant, you don't have a square. Here are some examples of square quadratics. For each of these, you can see that if you take this middle number, like negative 2, divide it by 2, you'd get negative 1, and square that to get a positive 1, you'll end up with the last number. You can try it again for negative 4. Negative 4 leads to negative 2, which leads to 4. Negative 6 leads to negative 3, which leads to 9. Something really important here about quadratic squares, or square quadratics, is there is a unique quadratic, or, or square quadratic, for every middle term. Let's look more at what I mean. If I told you I'm writing down a square quadratic, and I want you to finish it, there is always exactly one way to finish it. That one way is the only way you'll have a square quadratic. And in this case, we can take this middle term, which is going to have like a negative 1, divide it by 2, negative 1 half, and square it. And this is what the rest of that square quadratic looks like. So now that we know what a square quadratic is, what is completing the square? I'll demonstrate this by example. Here I have a quadratic. To see things clearly, I'll move the 7 onto the other side. So now, let's say this alone was part of some square quadratic, and I asked you to find, again, that last term. We'd take this 6, divide it by 2, and square it. That'll give us the 9. But wait, I can't just add 9 here. If I did that, I'll have to add it over here. So let's stick with that. I just added 9 to both sides. That didn't actually change anything. So because this first part is a square quadratic, I can factor it. And if I do, I'll end up with x plus 3 squared. And on the right, if I add those together, I get 16, which is really just 4 squared. Now I can take the square root of both sides, so I've got x plus 3, and on the right, the square root of 4 squared is really plus or minus 4. So now I have two solutions. So x is negative 3 plus or minus 4. This means that x could be negative 3 plus 4, which is 1, or negative 3 minus 4, which is a negative 7. This is completing the square. What we did was we moved this constant term over, completed the square, and added what was left, added that third term to both sides. That way we have the same equation. It's like if x is equal to 1, it's like saying x plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1. There's nothing wrong with adding to both sides as long as you add the same amount. So once we added the rest of that square onto both sides, we factored the left side because we turned it into a square. And we also simplified the right side. And we expressed it as a square. We took the square root. It's really straightforward. Once you get this, once you get this, um, once you get the square is equal to some constant, all you have to do is just take the square root. And you'll end up with this, which immediately gives you your answer. There was a lot of important material covered in this lesson, so please look at the examples to learn more about completing the square.